Hi, my name is Ed Shad, curator of the Broad Museum in Los Angeles, and I am here to talk to you about the painting Unknown Quantities of Light, Part 4, Ross Blechner's 1988 meditation on the AIDS crisis. The story of Unknown Quantities of Light, Part 4, starts with one of Ross Blechner's earliest art experiences when he saw the work of Bridget Riley and other artists from an art historical grouping called Op Art at an exhibition called The Responsive Eye in 1965. The exhibition was at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and Blechner was only 16 years old. When I think of Op Art, I think of the physical reality of the eye, specifically the strange effects that shape and color can generate in the eye. As visual stimuli fall in the retina, all sorts of things occur. To use just one example, look at two color blocks that are positioned right next to each other. You will observe that the colors, as they interact with your eye, mix and bleed visually into each other. If the colors are red and blue, for example, you might observe a haze of purple where the blocks meet. There is no particular reason to get metaphoric when one observes this simple phenomenon. One can instead label the optical event as physical and fundamental, a part of what nature does. It is a delight to watch these effects build, how the strange quirks of the eye can give optical illusions of lines moving, pulsing, and twitching. Op art celebrates these effects. It takes an interest in what the eye can do. And this inspired a young Ross Blechner, who took in Bridget Riley's paintings at the age of 16. In the early 1980s, some of the first paintings that Blechner ever showed in a gallery were based on op art effects. However, Blechner, like so many across the world, would soon start to feel the impact of the rising AIDS epidemic. As a member of New York's gay community, he found that the disease had quickly moved from a mere rumor to a mysterious illness that doctors and health officials were slow to understand and define into a full-blown crisis. The first U.S. case of AIDS appeared in San Francisco in August of 1980 and the illness gradually and horribly continued to circulate around the world. In a mere three years, by the end of 1983, there were 3,064 reported cases in the United States, and of this number, 1,292 people had died. These numbers were much larger in the wider world. The disease disproportionately affected the gay community. As a gay man, Blechner lived increasingly not only with the fear of contracting AIDS, but also with its losses, with the individual lives taken by the disease. I was 32 when it happened, said Blechner of learning of the AIDS crisis. I was scared that I would be dead in 10 years. There were no tests back then, so I had just assumed. AIDS brought a total paradigm shift in consciousness. A rupture. Blechner was among the first artists globally to take on the subject of AIDS in painting. And his approach to abstraction began to change. More Wreath, from 1986, is an example of how Blechner reflected upon AIDS. In the painting, Blechner associates the reef with the body. Plant vines take on the look of organs, and the central shield is punctured with a spear and bleeding. Another painting, Bedflower, from 1985, shows a stylized plant, perhaps an orchid, which hovers over an empty stage as though a soul leaving the theater of the world. These paintings are elegies. They mourn the losses of AIDS. They use art to grapple with the illness, to grieve the dead, 
and to raise awareness in the living. Unknown Quantities of Light Part 4 was painted two years after More Wreath and Bedflower. It is a part of a series of paintings that constituted a return for Blechner to the effects of his early op art influences. What I find fascinating about this painting is that it shows how strangely absorbative abstraction can be. Patterns, shapes, and colors, all basic visual cues interacting with our eye, can take up our concerns, our projects, and our lives. Simply put, abstraction has a way of absorbing us and expressing us offering its patterns as a metaphor for our interactions with the world. Following his paintings about AIDS, I find Blechner's abstractions transformed. Instead of seeing the melding and shifting colors of unknown quantities of light, part four, as merely optical phenomenon, I find myself with a sudden capacity for metaphor. Viewing this painting... I feel as though I am in transition with the colors and with the shapes, that I am in a liminal place where the physical threatens to pass away. Remarkably, the painting presents that shift in consciousness that Blechner experienced with AIDS, that rupture, and it does so with the natural flicker of the eye. <laughs> 